This is unfortunate and politically motivated as well. Wimbledon recently banned Russian players from the event this year. Now, Wimbledon is banning Russian and Belarusian tennis players from this summer's tournament because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. What's wrong with them? Just because they're Russian and the president's name is Vladimir Putin. It is an unfair measure provoked by the Russian-Ukraine war. Popular Russian player Daniel Medvedev recently opened up publicly about this decision by Wimbledon. What did he say? Also, why exactly did Wimbledon ban them? Hello and welcome back to Rally Rackets. In today's video, we'll talk about the fact that Daniel Medvedev finally opened up on Wimbledon's Russian player ban. Stay tuned to the end to find out everything about this major announcement and its repercussions. As he prepares to return to tour action this week, Daniel Medvedev was non-committal when questioned about Wimbledon's ban on Russian players. The 26-year-old Moscow native has been out of play since the end of March due to a hernia condition but is set to return this week at the Geneva Open. Naturally, the US Open winner was asked his opinion on the All England Club's decision taken during his absence in his first interview with reporters. Medvedev stated, There's been a lot of discussion about it. I was just trying to keep up since I didn't have any decisions to make. It's currently about Wimbledon, the ATP and maybe the British government. It's hard scenario. And as with every circumstance in life, if you poll 100 people, everyone will have a different perspective. I'll be thrilled to play at Wimbledon if I'm able to. This competition is fantastic. If I'm unable to participate, I will strive to participate in other events and prepare properly for next year if I'm given the opportunity. Many of the world's best players, notably Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic, have spoken out against the ban. Medvedev claims that he is just now having the chance to speak with some of his peers about possible future actions. I haven't spoken to any of them face to face since I haven't been on the tour, the Russian explained. He kept on saying, when I arrived in Geneva on Saturday, it was the first time I was able to speak with players, and if they start talking about this, we can discuss. I'm not sure what's going on, what's going to happen, or whether any further choices will be made. It's the same with Wimbledon. I'm not sure if this decision is 100% correct, but it's made. Medvedev added that because of his downtime, he's been closer to developments in Ukraine. I had some time to follow what was occurring because I was working hard on my recovery, he explained. Experts believe that, despite its good intentions, Wimbledon alone will not settle the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The All England Club, which organizes the only Grand Slam tournament held on grass, said on Wednesday that players from Russia and Belarus will not be able to compete at Wimbledon this year. Wimbledon is the first tennis tournament to exclude participants from Russia, which launched a military invasion of Ukraine in February, and Belarus, a close Russian ally. The Davies Cup and the Billie Jean King Cup, two international team tournaments, have barred teams from these nations. Given the championship's global profile in the UK and around the world, it's our responsibility to contribute to the widespread efforts of government industry and sporting and creative institutions to limit Russia's global influence throughout the strongest means possible," the club said in a statement. A tennis event is unlikely to influence Russian President Vladimir Putin's decisions. However, it isn't the purpose. Rather, a Wimbledon ban adds to the lengthy list of political and economic penalties imposed on Russia. It also might push Putin to alter his course. Excluding Russian players from Wimbledon would not influence the result of the conflict literally, but it would convey a very powerful symbolic statement, says Margarita Balm Maceda, a Seton Hall University professor of diplomacy and international relations. With Russian players barred from Wimbledon, the Russian public is once again reminded that Putin is no longer capable of ensuring Russia's international standing. Putin has sought to stretch his influence via sports, according to Bal Maceda, who is also affiliate of Harvard University's Davis Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies and the Ukraine Research Institute. The Sochi Olympics are a great illustration of this tactic. According to Bal Maceda, Putin continues to have widespread support in Russia, as does Russia's military action against Ukraine. However, the loss of international reputation, combined with the slow but inevitable impact of economic sanctions on Russia, is gradually sending a message to the Russian people that Putin is no longer capable of ensuring their safety. The number two in men's tennis, defending US champion Daniel Medvedev and number eight Andrei Rublev are among the players affected by Wimbledon's suspension. Former world number one Victoria Azarenka and two-time Australian Open winner from Belarus, number four Arinya Sabalenka, who reached the Wimbledon semi-finals a year ago, and Russia's Anastasia Pavlyshenkova, last year's French Open runner-up, are among the women who will be unable to compete under the new rules announced on Wednesday. Russia has also been sanctioned by other sporting organizations. Because of the conflict, sports like figure skating and track and field have barred Russian and Belarusian individuals and teams from competing. The Russian men's national soccer team was thrown out of the World Cup qualifying playoffs by FIFA, and the men's Champions League final was moved from St. Petersburg 
to Paris by UEFA. The All England Club cited guidance set out by the United Kingdom government as a factor in its decision to impose the ban. The United Kingdom has taken a hard line against Russia, sanctioning, for example, Chelsea football club owner Roman Abramovich, a Russian oligarch who is under pressure to sell the soccer team. Russian and Belarusian athletes will be able to compete in the French Open, which begins on May 22nd. The United States Open is adopting a cautious approach. The USTA said in a statement it acknowledges the difficult choice made by the All England Club to deny entry from Russian and Belarusian players to the Wimbledon Championships in response to the unusual set of circumstances concerning their government's instructions. At this moment, the USTA has not made a judgment on Russian and Belarusian players competing in the 2022 US Open. We oppose Russia's unwarranted aggression against Ukraine and the USTA has and will continue to provide humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainian people. While Wimbledon has taken unilateral action against Russian and Belarusian players, the ATP and WTA, the sports governing organizations, have spoken out against the ban. Both tours haven't let Russian and Belarusian players compete under their national flags but they haven't outright banned them. The ATP and the WTA have both called the verdict discriminatory. Individual athletes should not be penalized or barred from competing because of where they're from or choices made by their nation's governments, the WTA said in a statement released Wednesday. Prejudice, especially the decision to target such discrimination at individuals competing on their own, is neither fair nor reasonable. Critics argue that athletic sanctions against Russia have had little impact. From a soft power standpoint, the various sanctions Russian athletes have faced, such as doping fans, stripped national symbols, or moving sporting events outside of Russia, have had no significant impact on Russia's aggression or use of hard power, says Yoav Dubinsky, a public diplomacy professor at the University of Oregon. This is a dangerous path that could backfire in a variety of ways such as organizations deciding to impose political bans on athletes from other countries, further polarizing the sports world, or other industries deciding to single out people based on their nationality, negatively impacting workplace inclusions. While the objective is to stop Russia's aggressiveness without a direct military confrontation, such moves may have unforeseen repercussions. However, Dominsky recognizes the ban's potential benefits. This appears to be an attempt to increase international pressure on the Russian leadership to end the crisis in Ukraine without resorting to military action, Dubinsky argues. Although this is a flawed excuse if the aim is to avert World War III, a few athletes competing in a tennis tournament is a minor price to pay. It doesn't matter how prominent it is or how well-known the players are. Wimbledon's decision reminded Lindsay Krasnoff, a research associate at the SOAS University of London Centre for International Studies and Diplomacy, of the International Olympic Committee's apartheid-era ban on South Africa. Many other factors, such as boycotts by a variety of international corporations and so on, put pressure on the South African leadership to eventually reverse that policy, Krasnov adds. I regard the Wimbledon announcement in the same light. I feel bad for the players involved. However, when it comes to sanctioned packages, the global sports world's response, the quick withdrawal of the Champions League final, and the exclusion of the Russia from the World Cup qualifying were the easiest things to accomplish. Wimbledon is, first and foremost, another layer of it. And despite the popular belief that politics and sports should not mingle, they have always done so. That's something we've always known. So with this, our video has come to an end, but we will return with some new and exciting videos in the future. Until then, please ensure that you enjoy our video by hitting the like button. Also, share your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below. Don't forget to click the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Thank you for your time. We hope to see you at the next one. And until then, peace.